kick back and learn. For our next presenter, please Ignite Denver. Give it up to Karen Stewart. All right, 2005, north of Nigeria, two men have been convicted of sodomy and sentenced in the high courts to death by stoning. I am shocked and horrified. The next day I arrive at the clinic. I am astounded as I overhear my colleagues at work. They are all pedophiles. Imprison them for life. They all deserve to be killed. I had been working with Doctors Without Borders for the past 12 months in Lagos, Nigeria for the HIV AIDS clinic. The staff consisted of 50 people, over 90% Nigerians. I loved my staff. I loved the team. They were like my family. We shared our challenges together. We witnessed death. We saw miraculous recoveries. They were caring people. Some of the staff were HIV positive. We had discussed the wrongful stigma and discrimination they faced. But what of this intolerance and contempt for gays and lesbians? What of the incongruence? I felt I needed to combat this tremendous fear, hate, and misunderstanding. I made a decision. I would say the words aloud, I am a lesbian. <laughs> I knew I needed to give people time to process what I was going to tell them, and I couldn't be the boss lady. So I waited a few weeks and handed off my supervisor position. This was not about me. This was not about coming out. This was about education, trust, uh, tolerance, friendship. That team, my team, needed to know that they had liked known, and some even loved a lesbian. I knew out of respect, I must first tell our chief matron, Mrs. Abuku. She was uh, concerned that the staff would be, the staff reactions would be hurtful to me. She gave me directives on who to tell and who not to tell. Not Rita, she yelled. Rita was a nurse who loudly supported that all homosexuals should die. At 11 o'clock that night, I got a call. Hello, Karen, this is Mr. Abuku. My heart dropped. Don't tell, don't tell was his message. I was very unsettled. The following day, I arrived at the clinic, scared, actually terrified, but ready. I took people two to three together, one from the Rita camp, one with a broader worldview, and one I was uncertain about. The responses were varied. You seem like a tomboy. Are all lesbians tomboys? I've never met one before. You've never come on to me. You've never touched me. You don't hate men. When I spoke with Rita, she was indeed very angry. She asked, who instigated this? How did this happen? We sat for an hour. At the end, she said, if you are happy, but ultimately she was filled with sorrow. The day continued as I took people into the telling room. We just don't have this in Nigeria. You don't act like one. And many, God will save you. I will pray for you. Several people said I must trust them as trusted friends to share such a secret. Some even said, you are still my friend. You are still Karen. I still love you. The following day, I returned to the clinic. What had I done? Had I shattered the bond with these people? I came in, eyes down, careful not to appear looking or interested in anyone. Mid-morning, Mrs. Abuku arrived. Would she be angry? I spoke the unspeakable. Would she admonish me? No. She came directly to me and gave me a full hug. I did not reciprocate. She shook me. What's wrong with you? Hug me. I gently hugged her back. She then began to move my body in her arms, dancing, yes, dancing, in the hallway. 
staff and patients all around laughing and clapping. Again, I stiffened, still frightened. She shook me, dance with me. And I did just that as tears rolled down my face. Thank you.